In this video, I want to talk about mathematically describing one-dimensional oscillatory motion. I call it oscillations. And so before, we sort of looked at qualitatively what oscillatory motion was. We had some object that was maybe attached to a spring, and it would move back and forth. There was some point in the middle where it was at equilibrium. If it were there, it wouldn't move. And then displaced, it it would uh, oscillate back and forth between a, two, a maxima and a, a minima position. All right. And so to quantitatively, what I want to say is simple harmonic motion. Okay, simple harmonic. Motion is one-dimensional motion described by a sinusoidal function. So it is 1D motion mathematically described by a sinusoidal function. And sinusoidal function means either a sine function or a cosine function. And so let's graph what that would look like. So if I have some time as a uh, in seconds, then I would have some sine function. Well, you've seen any of my other videos. You know I don't draw that well. So this is my interpretation, my artistic interpretation of a sine or cosine function, it's an oscillatory function in time. And there's some t is equal to zero uh, axis that could be anywhere. Let's, let's put it here. Okay. And so this, the vertical axis here is x of t. It's, yes, x is a, as a function of time. Well, so it's x of t. It's in units of meters or centimeters or some sort of length. Time has units of seconds. My position as a function of time has units of meters. Okay, got that out of the way. So if I want to represent this motion mathematically, I can represent it in the form where I have some constant times a cosine or a sine. It doesn't really matter. We'll use cosine and cosine of some constant, this is an omega times t, plus some other constant, uh, I would call here the Greek phi sub zero or phi naught. So this is, position is a function of time, and so here's my time, and then there are three constants, a, omega, and phi naught. And, and don't worry, I will describe all of these, but I want to just get that out there right away. This is now my one-dimensional sinusoidal function of time that can describe the uh, oscillatory motion. Okay, so to understand what those mean, let's define some other terms. The first term of interest is the period, t. T is defined, this is the, the period, and the period is the time for one complete oscillation. So say, for example, here it's at its uh, peak, its maximum positive oscillation, and here is where it gets back to exactly that same point. If I think, you know, it's always good to to keep a visual of what's going on. So remember the demonstration of something oscillating back and forth on a, on a spring. So if it starts here, it oscillates back and forth, back to where it starts from. That's represented graphically here by this maximum displacement, and it comes back to its maximum displacement. So that is a time. So the time necessary to come back to its maximum displacement is the period. Its units are in seconds. And so how we often write that is seconds per oscillation. I can even write these out. Seconds per oscillation. Now oscillation is not a unit. It, this is in units of seconds. But I, I keep that there because it is the number of seconds per one oscillation and that's a descriptive 
word that helps me understand what a period is, but its units are seconds. Seconds is the unit. So another important uh, quantity to define is what we call the frequency. And the frequency is equal to the inverse of the period. So it has units of 1 over seconds. Or I might say oscillations per second. So the frequency tells you how many oscillations the system undergoes in one second, or what fraction of an oscillation it, it undergoes in one second. So that's what we mean mathematically by frequency. Okay, so next up is the constant A, which is the amplitude. So that's our first constant in our in our uh, expression here. And the amplitude is the maximum displacement from equilibrium. So the, the furthest it gets from equilibrium is uh, positive A on the positive x-axis and negative a on the negative x-axis. And you can see that mathematically from this expression. You know that cosine of any, you know, this is an angle. We, we often take uh, cosines of angles, right? Uh, another word that we use to describe this is the phase. And so this omega t plus phi naught, it, it comes up with a number which we'll call a phase and the cosine of of any of any angle or phase is a number between 0 and negative 1 I'm sorry between 1 and negative 1 and so the maximum value that this can ever take on is is a and then the the uh, minimum value it can ever take on is negative a so it oscillates between those two values and so a is called the amplitude and so if I look back up here my my picture here, this is A, and this is negative A. All right, so that's the amplitude. The next quantity I want to define is omega. Omega is called the angular frequency. And the angular frequency is equal to 2 pi over the period. And so where does that come from? Well, if we look at our function up here, we can do a, sh a sh very short derivation. We know that for whatever value I have at some value of t, it must be equal to the function one period later t plus capital T, because that's the definition of period. It's where it goes back to the, the time it takes for the function to go back to the, exactly the same displacement from equilibrium. And so if we uh, compute this using this function, we have a cosine of omega t plus phi naught is equal to a cosine omega t plus omega capital T plus phi naught. And so when is this, these two uh, expressions equal? Well, cosine of some angle theta is equal to cosine of theta plus 2 pi. 2 pi is when the uh, the trig function starts to repeat. So that implies that the difference between these two angles, the difference between these two angles is omega times capital T. So this implies that 
omega times the period is equal to 2 pi, or omega is equal to 2 pi over the period. And so that's the, 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 our second constant we have here. It's called the angular frequency, and it's related to the period of the oscillation through that expression. And so we can see then, because of how the frequency is defined, that the angular frequency is equal to the uh, normal frequency by this expression. And so we know that 2 pi is the number of radians in a single oscillation. And so angular frequency, we say, is in radians per second. Again, radians is not a unit. It is, it is just a way to uh, define angles. So angular frequency and frequency have the same units. It's 1 over seconds. But they're not the same value. They're different by a factor of 2 pi which is converting between radians and oscillations, because there are two pi radians in one oscillation. And so angular frequency then is in radians per second. Okay, so let's just, before we move on, do a really quick example. Let's say I have x as a function of time, which is 7 centimeters cosine 6 pi t plus pi over 3. If this is my expression, what are all the parameters that we've discussed? Well, we know that our amplitude, our amplitude is equal to this number in front of the trig function, so our amplitude is 7 centimeters. We know that our angular frequency is the constant that multiplies our time, our independent variable, so our angular frequency is 6 pi radians per second. And we know that our that phi naught, which is our constant, in our expression that we add to, to uh, 6 pi t is pi over 3. This is called a phase constant and it is nothing more than the phase at t is equal to 0. It's the phase at t is equal to 0. t is 0, you have cosine of pi over 3, cosine of phi naught. All right, so that's the, the constant in this term. If we want to know the frequency, the frequency, given this expression, is omega over 2 pi, so that is equal to 3 oscillations per second. So this describes an object that is oscillating back and forth, and it goes through three complete oscillations every a second. And so then we can finally calculate the period, which is 1 over the frequency, which is 1 thirds seconds, seconds per oscillation. Every oscillation takes one second to uh, take place. And so there's sort of an example. This is our expression, and, and from that, how to find the parameters that quantitatively describe that motion. Okay, before we move on, let's find the other uh, parameters, the other expressions, the velocity and the acceleration. So we have that the position as a function of time for oscillatory motion is given by this trig function, where a, omega, and phi naught are constants. And so we know that the velocity as a function of time is the derivative of the position as a function of time. So I can calculate this derivative 
using the chain rule and I get negative a omega sine omega t plus phi naught. So using the chain rule I, of this I get, neg I get negative a sine of omega t plus phi naught. That's the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then I have to use the chain rule and take the derivative of the of this of the inside term and that's just a polynomial the derivative of omega t plus phi naught is just omega and so I get another factor of omega out front so that's just practicing our differentiation and so then our acceleration which is equal to the derivative of the position then gives me the acceleration as a function of time equal to negative a omega squared cosine omega t plus phi naught because the derivative of sine is cosine so I get cosine omega t plus phi naught again and then the derivative of the uh, internal function of cosine gives me another factor of omega so I get omega squared so the one thing to notice about this is the acceleration, well here, let me show this, this right here, a times cosine omega t is in fact the position function. So the acceleration is equal to negative omega squared times the position as a function of time. And so wherever the whatever value of the position is the acceleration is uh, pointing in the opposite direction omega squared is a positive number and then there's a minus sign that flips the direction so in os that's our first sort of insight in oscillatory motion the acceleration is always pointing in the opposite direction of the position and in fact the velocity is going to be uh, 180 degrees out of phase is because it's a, the only difference between in in where it points then the position and the velocity is to go from a, a cosine to a sine and so just if we were to look at say a graphical representation of this so if this were time and let's do these in in different different colors so if my position is is red I'll I'll draw I'll start here so that's uh, the the red it has some amplitude of a and negative a if I now want to plot the velocity it's going to be zero when the acceleration is at its maximum and it's a maximum when the uh, the position is zero, and so it's going to haha <laughs> trying to so you also have a sine function or a sinusoidal function that is sort of 180 degrees out of phase for the velocity oh I, I've drawn them on the same axes but of course these have different amplitudes they're different units this is uh, as the amplitude of omega a this is negative omega a and so finally if we want say the acceleration which has uh, amplitude negative a, but it's in the opposite direction of the um, the position. So I'm trying to draw with a different amplitude. So it is the opposite sign of the position, and it has an amplitude of negative omega squared a and omega squared a and so that's sort of a graphical representation of the position velocity and acceleration of sinusoidal motion